era. There is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling the transmission. Yosemite. Welcome to a land of granite monoliths, carved by eons of glacial artistry, to a place where cascading waterfalls plunge thousands of feet to peaceful valley floors, where giant sequoia trees centuries old seem to actually touch the sky, and where idyllic meadows and wide placid streams beckon visitors from near and far. This is Yosemite National Park. Nature's wonderland of granite and stone, filled with an enchanting beauty matched by few places on Earth. On this video trip, we'll journey throughout Yosemite and discover its many natural attractions, from the valley floor to the far reaches of the backcountry. We'll stand atop towering points and talk about Yosemite's fascinating formation and geology. We'll chat a bit about the history of the park, its patriarch naturalist John Muir, and the tireless efforts to preserve the area as a natural wonderland. We'll point out some of the park's premier attractions, some of the fine accommodations and services, both in and out of the park, what to expect in weather during your visit, the many species of wildlife you'll see on your way, the countless recreational opportunities, and so much more. We'll visit quaint art galleries, step back in time and tour an ancient Indian village, talk with a park ranger, and drink in all of the sights and sounds that are the beautiful hinterland called Yosemite. Your personal guided tour is ready now, so let's get started. Yosemite National Park is situated on the western flank of the Sierra Nevada Mountains in East Central California. Easily accessed by four major routes and entrances, the nearest large city is Fresno, about 65 miles to the southwest. Highway 41 is the major route leading to the park's south entrance from Fresno. Another major access route which leads to the park from the San Joaquin Valley is Route 140 from Merced taking you about 67 miles to Yosemite's southwest or arch entrance. Here, you'll enter the park through a narrow, short archway carved out of a huge granite boulder. The West Central, or Big Oak Flat entrance, is accessible via Highway 120 from the town of Manteca off Interstate 99 east of San Francisco. From the freeway, the drive is about 110 miles to the park boundary. Should you be entering from the east, a breathtaking scenic route from the town of Lee Vining ever climbs up the eastern face of the Sierra Nevadas to the Tioga Pass entrance, situated at nearly 10,000 feet in elevation. All roads into the park provide ready access to Yosemite's major features. We'll talk about specific directions a little later. Yosemite National Park, a naturally formed architectural masterpiece, encompasses 1,189 square miles and is bigger than the state of Rhode Island. Within its boundaries lie the remnants of one of the most monumental glacial carvings of stone and granite, geological sedimentation and erosion ever seen on this planet. Scientists estimate that nearly 500 million years ago, the process of formation began. At that time, the Sierra Nevada region hovered beneath an ancient sea. All sorts of sediments deposited on the ocean floor, building to depths of thousands of feet. The lower layers were formed and compressed into rocks, then later slowly raised by the contortions of the earth to form a mountain range that ran northeast to southwest. As the mountains rose, molten rock beneath the surface began to form and expand, creating the granite that would become the Sierra Nevada. But the spectacular granite formations and valleys that one sees today were masterfully carved by huge glaciers, which began with the advent of the Ice Age about two million years ago. 
these lumbering glaciers of untold force carved their way through the canyons of the Merced and the Hetch Hetchy. The ice slipped away and scoured the weaker sections of granite, but left some of the more solid portions intact. The end result was U-shaped valleys, which were sculpted to reveal some of the most massive and awe-inspiring domes, rock faces, spires, and peaks ever created. On the valley floors were left wide lush meadows and deep cool lakes when the ice age receded 10,000 years ago. Another amazing aspect of Yosemite is that there are five major life zones within its boundaries. Here, a visitor can stand in a grove of live oaks and chaparral at 2,000 feet in country that looks very much like the foothills of northern Mexico. Called the Upper Sonoran Zone, this special environment has an intriguing beauty all its own. On the other end of Yosemite scale is the Arctic Alpine Zone, situated from 11,000 to 13,000 plus feet where the adventurist can gaze upon lofty mountain peaks and serene alpine valleys that look very much like they could be found in the Alaskan backcountry. Situated in between are yet three other life zones with distinct environments that are just as invigorating. The transition zone, which ranges from approximately 3,000 to 7,000 feet, is a peaceful place where the wind whispers through stands of ponderosa and yellow pine trees, where lush meadows and wildflowers carpet the forest floor, and where sleek Sierra mule deer rest in the shadows of incense cedar and big leaf maple. Rising yet again up to 9,000 feet, we find ourselves in the Canadian life zone of Yosemite. Following its namesake, this is a zone where the air is thin yet clear, where the Jeffrey pine and golden aspen of the fall paint a landscape unparalleled by few other mountain retreats. Here, cool groves of red fir and dainty subalpine plants provide the backdrop for a place of refreshment and renewal. And if that isn't enough, one can step even higher to 11,000 feet or so through another of Yosemite's realms, the Hudsonian Zone. This is Timberline Country, where the earth turns to shale and stone, where the white bark pine somehow finds life in the crevice of a boulder, and where man is but a seasonal visitor. Yes, all of these special niches can be found within the confines of Yosemite. As naturalist John Muir once wrote, Never before have I seen so glorious a landscape, so boundless an affluence of sublime mountain beauty. Now, let's journey back in time a bit and talk about the park's colorful and intriguing history. People came upon the Yosemite scene about 4,500 years ago, according to historians. Native Americans of the Miwok ancestry built thatched huts and cedar lodges on the valley floors. They gathered black oak acorns, hunted the plentiful mule deer, and fished in Yosemite's bountiful streams. Every summer they gathered with their neighbors to the east, the Mono Lake Paiutes, to trade acorns and other items native to Yosemite for pinion pine nuts, obsidian, animal skins, and blankets. They left little trace of their wanderings and occupation and lived in peaceful coexistence with their Indian neighbors and the land. Though the first sighting of Yosemite Valley by non-Indians was probably made by the Joseph R. Walker party as they crossed the Sierra in 1833, the actual entry into the valley floor by whites wasn't until 1849, when two miners stumbled into the area tracking a wounded bear. That was the same year of California's famous gold rush, and soon, hordes of miners flocked to the region in search of their fortune. Conflicts with the Indian people who were bent on protecting their homeland became a common occurrence. Formed to punish the natives for their behavior, a group of soldiers called the Mariposa Battalion entered Yosemite Valley in March of 1851 in pursuit of offenders. Held in awe of the valley's spectacular beauty, and sure they had made an important discovery, members of the battalion proceeded to name the area Yosemite, from the Indian word meaning some of them are killers, referring to the grizzly bear which inhabited California at the time. Though the reports of the wonders of Yosemite by the soldiers caused interest, it wasn't until 1855 
that the first tourist parties arrived. During these early days, travel was by horseback, and visitors found their way to Yosemite's attractions via historic Indian trails, which wound their way up the mountain from the San Joaquin Valley. Soon, hotels and residences were established, orchards were planted, trails were widened to accommodate stagecoaches, toll stations were built, and most of the amenities of the day were offered by area entrepreneurs. The fame of this newfound paradise was spread throughout the land, and with it came not only multitudes of visitors, but also, as so often occurs, a push for private ownership, exploitation of natural resources, and downright abuse. With this onset of exploitation and commercial development came a major conservation movement, headed by Galen Clark and none other than the famous naturalist John Muir. Muir once voiced that the mountain parks and reservations are useful not only as fountains of timber and irrigating rivers, but as fountains of life. Because of the tireless efforts of Muir and Clark and a handful of other conservationists of the time, U.S. Senator John Connors of California introduced a bill that would protect Yosemite Valley and the Mariposa Grove of giant sequoias in perpetuity. Thus, on June 30th, 1864, President Abraham Lincoln signed the Yosemite Grant, deeding Yosemite and the Mariposa Grove of Sequoias to the state of California as a public trust. Congress designated Yosemite as a national park on October 1st, 1890. Though the first horseless carriage entered Yosemite illegally in 1900, it wasn't until 1913 that automobiles were permitted inside the park. Today, over 360 miles of paved roads and 94 miles of secondary roads await Yosemite's visitors. And that's not to mention the 800 miles of backcountry trails available. Over 3 million people visit Yosemite annually, attesting to the popularity that few other places on this continent or in the world for that matter have. Yosemite National Park can be divided into six major areas. The Big Valleys, Glacier Point Country, Wawona, the Giant Sequoia Groves, Tuolumne Meadows and the High Country, and the Back Country of the High Sierras. There's no one particular place to start, really, so let's begin with the park's most popular attraction, Yosemite Valley. It's probably a good idea to stop first in Yosemite Village at the Valley Visitor Center and pick up some information that will help us make our stay more safe and enjoyable. First of all, I'd suggest you pick up a copy of the Yosemite Guide. It's filled with all sorts of information on the park, including visitor activities, popular attractions, rules and regulations, the many services and tours available, and a lot of other good tidbits that you'll find very useful. And the guide is free, but only one per party, please. Also at the Visitor Center, you'll find maps, pamphlets, a listing of cultural and nature activities, a widescreen slide orientation program, not to mention a fine selection of books and other aids to help you in your trip planning. And right next door, I'm sure you'll want to visit the Museum Gallery. Open through the middle of September, colorful exhibits are on display highlighting recent works on Yosemite by area artists. Here also is the Indian Cultural Museum, displaying artifacts and the history of the Miwok and Paiute tribes. And the very popular self-guiding trail through the Awani Indian Village is a must-stop. Here, step back into the past as the trail reveals the very authentic-looking lodges and dwellings of a reconstructed Miwok Paiute village, appearing very much like it would centuries ago. Another popular attraction in the area is the self-guiding nature trail, which explores the ecological changes which affect Yosemite with the passage of time. Trail pamphlets may be picked up at the trailhead sign or at the Valley Visitor Center. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for some serious sightseeing, so let's journey through the incomparable valley. There are several ways to tour the valley floor. By free shuttle bus, by open tram tour, by bicycle, and of course by auto. We highly recommend the open tram tour. Not only does it cut down on the valley's traffic congestion, but you get to explore all the sights and sounds from the freedom of an open air coach, complete with knowledgeable tour guides and trusty drivers. The 
Yosemite Valley is home to most of the big domes, cliffs, rock faces, and waterfalls in the park. Starting at the visitor center and traveling west for about a half a mile, we reach the parking lot and trailhead to Lower Yosemite Falls. It's a short one quarter mile walk to the base of the falls and well worth the effort. There are actually two falls here really, the upper and lower. The upper fall drops 1,430 feet, separated by a middle cascade of 675 feet, and followed by the lower fall, which drops 320 feet. Combined, this cascading giant drops 2,425 feet, making it the highest fall in all of North America. The most spectacular displays of cascading water can be seen in the spring and early summer, when runoff is the highest. As we travel further west through the valley, one can't help but be impressed by the beautiful placid waters of the Merced River and the wide lush meadows that adjoin its banks. Here you are likely to run across the Sierra mule deer feeding at streamside. But remember, we're visitors here, so keep your distance. Oh, and by the way, take some time in your valley excursion to stop in the meadows, relax at one of the picnic areas, and visibly touch all that the Merced River environment has to offer, not the least of which are some of the most beautiful reflections of towering granite, verdant forest, and blue sky and water that ever graced the human eye. Traveling now about three and a half miles from the visitor center, we come upon truly an incredible sight, El Capitan, the Spanish word for the chief. This mammoth feature is the largest single granite rock on earth, spanning nearly 4,000 feet from base to summit. Rock climbers travel here from throughout the world to test their skills on the face of El Capitan. If you have a good set of binoculars, you're likely to see them scaling their way inch by precious inch up the sheer wall. As we make our loop around the valley floor now, we want to travel just a few miles west of El Capitan and turn left on the short road that leads us back to Highway 41 and the main artery that heads back to the village. Right near this intersection is the parking lot and trail to Bridal Vale Fall. Called Pahono by the Awanichi Indians, which means spirit of the puffing wind, Bridal Vale Fall plunges 620 feet from the rim above and is one of Yosemite's most famous attractions. In the afternoon, rainbows from the spray of the fall may be seen from the east end of the Wawona Tunnel. And speaking of this location, Tunnel View provides one of the most spectacular views of Yosemite Valley. Once you stand here, you'll readily see why it is one of the most photographed vistas in the world. Besides good views of El Capitan, Sentinel Rock, and the valley floor, you'll also get a bird's eye view of cathedral rocks. Back on the valley floor now and heading east towards Yosemite Village, on your right, keep an eye open through the trees for Sentinel Rock. Looming at over 8,000 feet, Sentinel Rock is an impressive testimonial to the size of the area's rock formations. And say, how about this for a treat, especially if you're here on a hot summer day? The kids will really enjoy a dip in the Merced River or a float down the river on an air mattress or rubber raft. A popular stop for this activity is below the arched rock bridge north of Curry Village. Be sure to take the light preservers along if you plan to be near the deeper holes. Our tour of Yosemite Valley wouldn't be complete without visiting the famed Mirror Lake. This is a walk-in area only and the bikes and cars must be left behind. Well, now that we're back in the Yosemite Village area, let's talk some about the fine accommodations in and around this small city. Curry Village is located at the southeast end of the valley and is the oldest hospitality establishment in the park, offering inexpensive tent cabins, regular cabins, and hotel rooms. Curry Village also features several stores, a hamburger stand, and the Curry Pavilion cafeteria. Due north of here across the Merced River and just east of the Church Bowl is the famous Awani Hotel, built in 1927. Designated as a National Historic Landmark, the hotel offers elegant dining and in addition a gift shop, lodging and a swimming pool for guests. In Yosemite Village itself, located next to the main post office, you'll find just about any fare to satisfy your mountain appetite. 
At Degnan's, a delicatessen, ice cream parlor, and fast food service are available. You'll also find excellent dining at the Loft Restaurant and the Village Grill, located next to the Village Store, which has just about all the provisions you'll need for your Yosemite adventure. And while you're in Yosemite Village, be sure to visit the Ansel Adams Gallery, located just west of the post office. In addition to a large selection of beautiful photographs, prints, and posters, you'll also find film, camera rental, curios, and gifts. The hub of the valley's activity is Yosemite Lodge, located west of the village, near the Lower Falls parking lot. This is one of the main starting points for the open tram tours and bus tours that are so popular on the valley floor. In the lodge area, you'll find a full-service cafeteria with outdoor dining, a post office, restaurants, gift and Indian shops, and of course, various types of lodging. And in the lodge area, you'll find a bike rental shop. Here is your opportunity to get off the crowded roads and tour Yosemite literally by the seat of your pants. The fresh mountain air, the breathtaking scenery, and all of the valley's other attractions just become more real and pleasurable when you tour by bike. And may I also recommend that you take time to leave your vehicle and discover the many side trails and self-guiding tours that Yosemite has to offer. There really isn't a better way to experience the park and get away from the crowds. Let's journey out of Yosemite Valley now, go north of the Big Oak Flat entrance about 18 miles on the Mather Road, and suddenly we enter Yosemite's other main glacial valley, Hetch Hetchy. Though it is off the beaten track, the peaceful waters of Hetch Hetchy Reservoir, backed up by the O'Shaughnessy Dam, is a visitor's delight. Our video trip of Yosemite just has to include some time to walk out the short trail to Glacier Point. Here you'll witness one of the most commanding views of mountain scenery in the world. The word awe-inspiring just had to be invented here. From this lofty vantage point, you'll witness a nearly all-encompassing panorama, from the vast mountain ranges and peaks of the High Sierra to a literally dizzying view of the valley floor, situated 3,214 distant feet below. From Glacier Point, you'll get one of the better views of Half Dome, a large rolling mountain of granite that looks as if it was sliced right in two with a giant knife. Half Dome used to be called South Dome, but popular demand changed its name about 1920, and it's been called Half Dome ever since. Here we're at 7,214 feet above the level of the sea, and Yosemite Valley is almost an even 4,000 feet. So the vertical drop from here is 3,214 feet. One of the most commonly done and more beautiful hikes in the park is what they call the Panorama Trail. And it goes from Glacier Point over to the top of Nevada Falls and Vernal Falls and down to Yosemite Valley. Um, I've been here 17 summers and I've never gotten tired of the view. Glacier Point is easily accessed by taking the well-marked road east of Xinhua Pin off Highway 41, 16 miles to the main parking lot. Further south on Highway 41, not far from the south entrance to the park, we come to Wawona, about an hour's drive from Yosemite Valley. Here you'll find first-rate golf on lush, pine-bordered fairways, the many art exhibits at the Thomas Hill Studio, and the stately Wawona Hotel, a wonderful Victorian structure built in the 1800s. Famous for its fine dining and comfortable guest accommodations, the Wawona Hotel should definitely be on your Yosemite itinerary. You'll also find a store here, well stocked with supplies, and a gift shop, which offers many interesting items. Another Wawona attraction is the Pioneer Yosemite History Center, located just across the road from the store gift shop complex. Loaded with all sorts of memorabilia from Yosemite's pioneer days, including cabins and buildings of the times, costume tour guides are on hand to give you colorful descriptions of Yosemite's past and what the center has to offer. Uh, of course, you must have uh, come up uh, by the uh, train.
to Raymond and then uh, taking the stage up here. Now, I know that you didn't really do that. It's, it's, uh, it's 100 years ago, though, here for most of the people here in the Pioneer History Center. So as you go around, remember, they don't know about VCRs or color TVs. They do know about the history of Yosemite. Uh, George Anderson over there, he's going to think it's 1881, and you kids might ask him about the school he built uh, back five years ago in 1876. I know you love schools. And uh, you adults ask about uh, President Garfield and uh, uh, what's going on in the park, because these people at these various places know about what's going on in Yosemite National Park, and they'll be happy to talk to you about that. Uh, the, the other buildings are uh, uh, going around the Hodgkin Cabin in uh, 1889, and of course uh, Cavalry in 1905, Ranger Patrol in about 1914, and in 1915 the Wells Fargo office. And uh, the people uh, in those places are volunteers up here and uh, uh, doing uh, uh, living history and they'll talk to you about uh, what was going on a, a hundred years ago. Be sure to hop aboard the History Center Stagecoach for an adventure you're sure to remember. The stage departs from the Wells Fargo office at the center and along the route travels under the famous covered bridge which spans the South Fork of the Merced River. Without a doubt, one of Yosemite's main claims to fame is the Mariposa Grove of giant sequoias. Just a short drive south of Wawona and located a few miles east of the park's south entrance. My name is Lisa Myers and I'm an interpreter here in the Mariposa Grove of giant sequoias. These are the largest living things in the world in terms of volume and mass. And here in the Mariposa Grove, we happen to have the oldest living sequoia in the world. The grizzly giant is estimated to be 2,700 years old. We have other special trees that people often ask for, like the Wawona Tunnel Tree. Many of you perhaps have driven through the Wawona Tunnel Tree. That was up until about 1968. In the winter thereafter, it fell on the ground and you can still see it today, but you can no longer drive through it. There is another tunnel tree, the California Tunnel Tree, located very close to the grizzly giant. Many people ask why the giant sequoias can get to be so old, and we believe it's because of a chemical called tannin or tannic acid, which gives the trees the reddish color and acts as a natural preservative, keeps things like insects, diseases, and fires out of the tree to an extent. The major cause of death for the giant sequoias is toppling over. For a tree that stands almost 300 feet tall, it has roots that seldom go deeper than six feet underneath the ground, yet they can spread out about 150 feet in all directions. You're in a unique place in the world because giant sequoias only grow naturally in 75 different pockets or groves along the western slope of the Sierra Nevada here in California. Here in Yosemite, there are three groves of giant sequoias, and the Mariposa Grove is the largest. The Tuolumne and the Merced Groves are located in the northwest part of Yosemite National Park. A well-marked foot trail, which includes two side nature trails, leads you beneath these towering giants. And interpretive signs tell you a bit about the history of the more prominent trees in the park. You can also tour the grove with a ranger or see its wonders from an open tour tram. Tickets are available at the tram boarding area near the gift shop. Let's leave the lower country now and climb in elevation up to the Canadian and Hudsonian zones we talked about earlier and enter another world to Wallamy Meadows and the high country of Yosemite. Here, wide verdant meadows, riven by meandering mountain streams, give way to stark mountain peaks and groves of pine and fir. On your way, take the well-marked side road to White Wolf, named for an Indian chief who once camped at the spot. Facilities include a campground, lodging, meals, stables, a ranger station, and naturalist activities in the summer. Stop at Tenaya Lake, nestled in a glacier car basin, and glide a boat through the morning mist. Enjoy a picnic at Lakeside, or simply set up camp and relax. 
And we'll also want to drive on in to the Tuolumne Meadows Visitor Center and find out what's going on in the area. You'll soon find out that there are morning and afternoon nature walks with a ranger, campfire programs, and a host of other delightful activities. Another sight you're apt to see on your journey on the Tioga Road is more thrill-seeking rock climbers. Stand back and watch as these daring souls scale the smooth granite faces of Yosemite's high reaches. Talk about exciting and say, should you ever have the hankering to try this challenging sport, you'll definitely want to check in with the Yosemite Mountaineering School located in Tuolumne Meadows. Expert instruction is offered for beginner, intermediate, and advanced skill levels. For more particulars and class schedules, <laughs> service station and ranger station are also found in the Tuolumne Meadows area. Tuolumne Meadows is also the gateway to the High Sierra Wilderness, truly the crown jewel of Yosemite. Hike to your heart's content on the many miles of trails that lead to Yosemite's backcountry, or view the sights from the back of a horse or mule. Explore the John Muir Trail, the Grand Canyon of the Tuolumne River, or the inspiring Cathedral Range. Yes, backpacking in the High Sierras is the stuff of which memories are made. Summer is the best time, of course, since most hiking trails are snow-covered until at least mid-May. Free wilderness permits are required for all overnight stays. Be sure to check for information on current conditions, tips on storing food from bears, and how to obtain a permit by contacting one of the following locations. Permits may be obtained in person up to 24 hours in advance and are not required for day hiking. Detailed maps and hiking guides are available for purchase at park visitor centers and gift shops. A list of available maps and other publications may be obtained by writing to Trails in the park vary in difficulty and could be dangerous. Hikers should refer to trail guides for trail descriptions before proceeding. To help make your hike safe and enjoyable, here are a few suggestions and regulations. If you're making an overnight stay, pack enough high-energy foods to sustain you. Please stay on the trails. Taking shortcuts can be dangerous and cause erosion and damage to the landscape. Another exciting way to visit Yosemite is by horseback. Yosemite Valley Stables offer two-hour, half-hour, and full-day horse trail rides. Mount your faithful steed and be guided by an experienced wrangler to Yosemite Valley's attractions or backcountry locations. On some trips, saddlebags are provided for food and personal belongings. Other horseback trips are offered daily from these outfitters. A little word of caution to all bicycle enthusiasts, cycling is allowed only on established bikeways and roads open to private vehicles. If you want to try your hand at fishing, you'll need a California State Fishing License. A local sporting goods store or the sport shop in Yosemite Valley, the Wawona store, and the Tuolumne Meadows store have licenses available. The better fishing in Yosemite is usually found in isolated areas. There is an abundance of wildlife and vegetation within Yosemite National Park. We have several types of wildlife in the park, uh, namely deer, squirrel, 
uh, small types of animals. The big type of animals would include um, bighorn sheep and deer. Particularly with the deer, that becomes a problem with the, the visitor in that the deer have had such an involvement with the human population that they've almost come to the point of become, becoming domesticated. Along with that, um, there have been some confrontations between the deer and, and the human. Whereas the human tries to feed the deer and pet the deer, the deer is not really all that domesticated. He still has some wild side to him. And they react on the fear of the human coming towards them. And we have, again, had injuries because of that. Uh, the deer is mainly reacting out of fear and self-preservation. Uh, we ask people not to feed the deer and not to approach the deer because of these problems that we've had. For the aspiring artists among us, whether you want to capture wildlife or scenery, there are free outdoor classes in painting and sketching available in Yosemite Valley. You'll find class schedules and other details available at the Art Activity Center next to the main post office. Camping in Yosemite is sure to be a treat for the whole family. There are 825 campsites in Yosemite Valley, 947 campsites along the Tioga and Big Oak Flat Roads, and 210 campsites in the Glacier Point Wawona areas. Many campgrounds are open on a first-come, first-served basis. Wawona, Hodgdon Meadows, and two valley campgrounds are open all year, while the remainder are open spring to fall. Remember, there are some Yosemite campgrounds that require reservations. permanent summer High Sierra camps that provide just about all the backcountry amenities. For any of the five High Sierra camps, reservations can be made by writing to <music> Hookups are not available in any of Yosemite's campgrounds. There are also a number of campgrounds just outside Yosemite operated by the U.S. Forest Service. Many are maintained on a first-come, first-served basis, and others may be reserved through Mistex. The number to call is 1-800-283-CAMP. Pets are allowed in designated campgrounds, but must be on a leash at all times. Pets are not allowed on any park trails. A 10-stall open-air kennel is maintained at the Yosemite stables in the summer where dogs larger than 10 pounds can be boarded. At Yosemite, you'll find many public services. Laundry facilities are available at housekeeping camp from spring through fall. There is postal service available at the post offices in Yosemite Village, at Yosemite Lodge, and Wawona. For emergencies in the park, the widespread 911 number is available from public telephones and from hotel rooms. No coins are needed in pay phones for this number. Mass and other religious services are held at various locations throughout the park and surrounding communities. Consult your Yosemite guide for details. Yosemite has its own medical and dental care facilities located on the Awani Hotel Road near Yosemite Village. 24-hour emergency care is available. For those who are disabled, there is a complimentary list of facilities and services obtainable at any park visitor center. Mountain lodging is at its best in Yosemite, and there are plenty of facilities available in the park. Comfortable accommodations are available at Yosemite Park Lodge, Camp Curry, the Wawona Hotel, Tuolumne Meadows Lodge, White Wolf Lodge, and the Awani Hotel. For more information and reservations, contact the following.
there is a complimentary shuttle bus system that conveniently loops through the east end of Yosemite Valley. It makes regular stops at hotels, stores, the horse stables, the Valley Visitor Center, bike rental shops, popular trailheads, and other attractions. Buses operate daily out of Wawona as well. Touring Yosemite by bus is another popular travel option. You can choose one of Yosemite's sightseeing tours and travel the park in pure comfort. Nearby out-of-the-park lodging and facilities are available in Fresno, in Lee Vining at the base of the eastern slope of the Sierras, and just outside the park off the Merced Highway at El Portel. You'll find most necessary goods and services within an hour or so's drive of the park boundary. If you visit the park in the summer, expect warm and dry conditions for the most part. Temperatures can reach up to 100 degrees in July and August in Yosemite Valley, for example. Average summer temperatures range from highs in the 80s to lows in the 40s and 50s. Keep in mind, though, that temperatures can be cool in the high reaches of the park at any time of year, and thunderstorms are not uncommon. Though summer is the season that receives the bulk of Yosemite's annual visitation, I'd personally recommend a spring or fall visit. For one thing, the park's many attractions won't be as crowded. And for another, in the spring, for example, where temperatures range from lows in the 30s to highs of 65 degrees and above, the diversified flora is lush and green. In the fall, though, temperatures can be cooler. The crisp, clean mountain air, coupled with the many red and golden hues of autumn foliage, adds a new dimension to your Yosemite visit. November and March bring 70 to 90 percent of the year's total precipitation, but still offer a relatively mild climate. The first snows are usually light, with increasing snowpack as winter progresses and elevation increases. Winter highs range in the 40s and 50s, and lows in the 20s and 30s. The quiet beauty of Yosemite in the winter offers a special experience. There is skiing at Badger Pass. For more information on special... Yosemite is open year-round. While the crystal clear and icy cold water found in the mountain streams and many national parks may seem inviting to drink, don't do it. You'll see animals drinking the water, but humans must take several precautions. Drinking untreated natural water can result in a severe intestinal disorder called giardiasis. It can affect your dog or cat if you are traveling with house pets. Carried by both humans and animals, giardia contamination is common in surface water supplies like lakes, streams, and rivers. Here are three basic ways to protect yourself from giardiasis. The most effective protection is to carry your own water from a known safe drinking water supply. The next most effective method is to boil water obtained locally for at least a minute at low altitudes and three to five minutes at high altitudes. And the least effective method is to filter the water with a high quality filter that can remove particles as small as one micron. A moderate entrance fee for Yosemite National Park is charged for all motor vehicles entering the park. This entrance permit is good for seven days. Persons entering by foot, bicycle or bus are also charged a fee for a seven day entrance permit. For travelers who may be visiting one or more parks or other recreational areas during the year, there are four special annual and lifetime passes available. The Golden Eagle Pass is an annual entrance pass to all national parks, monuments, historic sites, recreational areas, and wildlife refuges that charge fees. The Golden Age Passport is a lifetime entrance pass to all of the same facilities for people who are 62 years of age or older. The Passport also provides a 50% discount on federal use fees inside the facilities. It does not cover other fees charged inside the park. 
The Golden Access Passport is a similar lifetime entrance pass for those who are blind or permanently disabled. This passport is also good for a 50% discount on federal use fees, but does not cover other fees charged inside the park. The annual pass and lifetime passports can be purchased by mail or in person from most National Park Service and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service offices or facilities. Individual national parks, monuments, historic sites, and recreational areas sell an annual parks pass which permits unlimited entry to the specific facility. These passes can be purchased by mail or in person at the national park facility in which you are interested. Yosemite. It's a marvelous wonderland of granite, stone, and water, tucked away in a setting unlike any other. It's a place where mammoth granite monuments, with a variety of wonderful shapes and hues, continue to inspire and cause wonder. And this is the home to the largest living things known to man, the stately giant sequoias, found in no other region of the world. Yosemite is just waiting for you to personally come, savor, and enjoy. Please turn it in at our snack bar. Thank you.